Welcome back. As we just showed you, Canada continues to struggle with issues around First Nations education. It's a struggle rooted in decades of abuse at residential schools. Nearly 40 years ago, a First Nations woman gave voice to that dark chapter in a simple poem called, I Lost My Talk. Now, as Vashi Capellos explains, it's being given new life in music and film. She called it a war of words, a war fought with her typewriter. Her name is Rita Jo. She lived in this house in Cape Breton. This is my mother's dress. They did call her a gentle warrior, and this was like her, um, her, un her uniform when she went to battle. I remember when she died, I don't know, somebody called her um, the poet laureate of Mi'kmaq people. And I said, yeah, that's, that's an apt description. Yeah, yeah, because she was, her writing was special. Rita wrote about memories both painful and deep like her time at Shubenacadie Residential School in Halifax. She says, I became an adult um, when my parents died. And she had to make that adult decision to put herself in the school. Rita was 12 years old and would spend four years there. She used to say, um, she said, it was like a castle. And she said, when I got there, it was like the, my, the castle, it just turned to dust. She said, it wasn't, it wasn't like I thought it was gonna be. Residential schools were the site of horrendous abuses that Canada has only recently started to recognize. The systemic discrimination of indigenous people for a century. She said, it was like a prison. She said, we were, um, we were treated like, we were herded like cattle and she said, we couldn't speak our language. At 16, Rita had to relearn her native tongue. She wrote about it in her poem, I Lost My Talk. I lost my talk to talk to you to go in. When I was a little girl at Shubnagdi School. And she wanted to share her love for her culture, her love for nature, her love for people, um, her children. She wanted to show people, like, this is how Native people are, and we're, like, we're not savages, because that's how she started writing. Two ways I talk, both ways I say. Your way is more powerful. Which one is from the Queen? One of those. One of these ones. One I of these two, yeah. I think it's one. this one. Oh, yeah, Queen Elizabeth's picture yeah. on there, yeah. This is the Privy Council Award. She, uh, that's, uh, that means like uh, she's an advisor to the for the Mi'kmaq people, yeah, to, to the, the queen. queen, yeah. She published seven books, met the Prime Minister, the Queen, and was awarded the Order of Canada, always as a proud Mi'kmaq woman. She wore this when um, she was awarded the Order of Canada. I love this dress, I'll never part with it. And someday, maybe it'll go in a museum. So gently, I offer my hand and ask, let me find my talk so I can teach you about me. Still, her simple message, published in 1978 about losing language, about oppression, remained hopeful for the future. When I first heard I lost my talk, uh, I thought, how powerful this is, how simple it is, how encouraging it is, because it was very free of bitterness. Now, at the National Arts Centre in Ottawa, Rita's life and work are being transformed, becoming a performance commissioned by the family of former Prime Minister Joe Clark. We're paying an old debt. It is that we are unleashing a, a sort of a trove, a treasure trove of Canadian capacity that we hadn't known before. I think like you. I create like you. Okay. It combines spoken word, film, and music 
total artistic immersion. I create like you. Good. This is primarily a piece about humanity. That's what this piece is. And she's a human being. And she walks, I, I speak like you, I think like you, I create like you. Don't take away my imagination. Don't take away the possibilities. The orchestra will perform music composed especially for Rita. So how do you take a poem and, and then transfer it to an orchestra? Uh, well, there's, there, there's different characters. I imagine there's different characters in the piece, and, but the primary character is, is the, the little girl uh, who's, who's the narrator. And so I chose the flute to represent her. And as she's taken away from this beautiful idyllic world and, and thrown into this, the residential schools, everything fall, falls apart. Yeah, I miss her very much, yeah. I lived with her all my life, and um, I looked after her uh, when she was battling Parkinson's disease. Rita died in 2007, but her legacy is everywhere. She used to tell us, um, after I'm gone, you guys can still read my words, and you guys can remember, remember me that way. So it's like she's, she's gone, but she's not like gone, gone. We still have her writing. Writing that is officially a part of history. A report released this year to address Canada's shameful past included, I lost my talk. Her voice is getting out there. It's, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna touch a lot of people. Like that, that poem, like I lost my talk, those words are strong. She says her message is gentle. It, you know, if one wishes to be healed, one must dwell on the positive. That is her quote, and that's, that is our mantra. That's how, that's what we, we come into the room, and we never forget that. And tonight, what Canada once tried to take away is finally being celebrated. The orchestra takes the stage. And as the flute plays, a little girl turns into a gentle warrior. And 
And that is our broadcast for tonight. A reminder, you can always connect with us on Facebook and Twitter or at globalnews.ca slash 16 by 9. I'm Carolyn Jarvis. From all of us here at 16 by 9, thanks for watching.